Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 10 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. Last episode we talked about the uh, boring machine, which was the first mining machine that we talked about. And in this video we're going to talk about the pile driver, another mining machine. So if you remember last episode, the boring machine can only dig horizontally, uh, and the pile driver can only dig uh, down, straight down. Um, so yeah, they both have limitations on the direction that they can go. So the pile driver essentially punches its way into the ground, requires a lot of, of power, uh, well, a lot of torque, anyway, um, to get working. So let's uh, check it out, how to make it. So the pile driver is crafted like this, with four base panels, a drill, two shaft units, an 8x gear unit and an iron flywheel core. Now we haven't talked about flywheels yet, we're going to talk about them in a future e uh, episode. But to make the iron flywheel core, very simple, uh, a steel gear surrounded by iron ingots. So eight iron ingots. Get you the iron flywheel core. And that gets you the pile driver. And uh, now we're also going to, I'm also going to mention the clutch because I'm going to, I'm using the clutch in this video so I may as well just see it. A clutch is a mount, a shaft unit, and a piece of redstone. Basically, it's just a shaft that you turn on and off with a uh, redstone signal. The pile driver is a very simple machine. It's not complicated, but it takes a ton of power. So, in order to use the pile driver, you need to give it at least 16 kilowatts. 16 kilowatts, which is, which sounds pretty reasonable, but it has to be at 80,000 newton meters, which is a crazy amount of torque. I was trying to calculate if it would even be possible to power this thing with like a gas engine, and it's not. You need like a 5,000 to 1 gear ratio, uh, which is obviously impossible. You need 314 or something like that, 16 to 1 gear units, and I don't think that would even work. So we're going to use the hydrokinetic engine. So remember, it's got 16,000 newton meters of torque. And um, a couple of things. Uh, there is no gear ratio that will give you an even 80,000 newton meters of torque. Um, and taking in 16,000 newton meters, the closest you can get is going over to 131,000 newton meters. And you do that by using an 8 to 1 uh, gearbox. But the only shafts that can handle this amount of torque are bedrock shafts, and we haven't talked about how to get that yet, so I'm showing you here how you can do that with diamond gearboxes. So if you want to power a pile driver uh, and you don't have access to bedrock yet, um, this is the way to do it with the hydrokinetic engine and two 8 to 1 diamond gearboxes. Um, and the reason for that is that we can use the splitting technique that I showed you earlier where you can split it, the power in half which gets the torque low enough to for the diamond gearboxes to handle it and then put it back together using bevel gears and shaft junctions because they won't break. Um, so you have to do it just like this. There can't be any shafts in between and then you can get 131,000 newton meters of torque at 4 radians per second. Okay. Um, now, obviously, if you give this more power, I mean, and, and get the to uh, you know have a higher base torque, then you can use a smaller gear ratio. So, if I had two hydrokinetic engines tucked together, I would only need a four to one ratio, and then it would be at a higher speed. So if you put a, if you put a couple of these hydrokinetic engines together to add the torque up, um, you can get more power into here. But this is how you can power it off of one hydrokinetic engine. Um, and this is the clutch right here. So, so even though we're putting power into this dyno, it's not going through into the pile driver yet. It's stopped here. I have to give it a redstone signal to get it going. Now, a couple of notes about the pile driver. It's very dangerous. Um, if you stand near the pile driver while it's operating, you will be inflicted with the nausea uh, condition. And if there are any saplings, or I think flowers, in the area, they'll get popped out of the ground. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So let's turn this thing on, and, and you'll see what it does. And see, it, it popped my lever off. <laughs> Which is a bit of a problem. 
That's the pile. What the pile ever does. So it just beat the ground. Oh goodness, what's going on? It looks like I don't know. Are there invisible blocks here? I think there might be. Anyway, the pile driver punches the ground and it creates a hole this shape. So it's a four, two, three, five by five hole with the corners chopped off. I'm gonna have to put a regular shaft on this because it won't keep let me keep the lever on here. So the levers pop off as well. Any, I guess anything that gets placed on the ground, it, it gets popped off. Oh wait, no. The reason it got popped off, of course, was because it broke the block that I had put it on. So I'm stupid. Let's just, I don't know where this netherrack came from. Let's just put that there and put that there. So you'll see I'm inflicted with nausea. You'll see the pile driver driving this, uh, sorry if this um, makes you anyone sick. Um, let me turn this thing off. And I think I know how to fix this. Let me get a pendant. Let me get a white crystal pendant from Geostrata and see if that prevents our nausea. Yes, it does. Great. So the pile driver, <laughs> it impacts the ground with this mining pile and breaks it. Now, the speed at which it operates, of course, is determined by the speed you put into it. So we're only giving it four radians per second. So it's not going to run. You'll see. You see how slow it's it's running. It doesn't tell me what the operational speed is, but it's running pretty slowly. So a couple of things about the pile driver is that um, certain blocks don't break immediately. They take several uh, hits to break. Um, stone is first turned into cobblestone, and then it gets broken. Um, obsidian takes a long time to break. It takes five hits uh, to break it. You see there that the cobblestone, the stone turned into cobblestone, uh, breaking. But you'll also notice that the mining, the pile driver, is destroying the blocks that it mines. Uh, it doesn't drop them. You you can't get them. They're just gone. So the pile driver is... I don't recommend it if you want to recover the blocks that it's mining. If you just want to dig a, a shaft straight down into the ground, um, maybe you're going to put tunnel bores off the sides or something, I don't know, then yeah, the pile driver will work. Um, but it, it will destroy everything that it hits. Okay, so this is pretty slow. Let's um, get this sped up. And we're going to get it sped up by, once again, using the cheat coil. So I'm going to stick that here. Screwdriver. Turn it around. Oop, I, it was already there. And we'll put... Um, got to put a uh, lever next to it. So let's give this the 80,000 newton meters that it wants, and let's kick this up to 1024 radians per second. There we go. Much more reasonable. So this is the pile driver. Um, the farther down it goes, obviously the slower it is because it takes longer for it to retract the mining pile. But you can see it's destroying everything it encounters. Um, the pile driver, like the boring machine, uh, ignores liquids. Unlike the boring machine, it does not destroy the liquids. It just goes through them. The liquids remain where they are. Um, the pile, the mining pile, just goes straight through them. So you will end up with if there's if there's like liquid, like if there's water up here. The mining pile will keep mining, but the water will remain, so it'll just fill up the entire shaft. So yeah, it's the pile driver. Uh, it breaks one row at a time, takes multiple hits, so it's, it's quite slow unless you give it a ridiculous amount of power. I mean, 80,000 newton meters at 1024 radians per second, that is a lot of power. It's, I guess almost a million watts? I don't know. It's a lot of power, though. So yeah, this is the pile driver. I honestly can't think of a situation where I'd want to use this thing. I mean, the power requirement is so massive, and it doesn't drop any blocks. So I, 
I can't think of a situation where I would actually want to use the pile driver. I mean, maybe if you wanted to freak somebody out, <laughs> causing earthquakes and stuff. If somebody had an underground base, if you were on a PvP for P server and somebody had an underground base, and you knew where it was, and you set up a pile driver right above their underground base and just let it go, that'd be pretty funny. Not that anybody would allow it. Not that he would allow it to run. That would be pretty hilarious, though. Someone's like, <gasps> "What's that sound?" Now, actually, no, because the pile driver has an interesting um, interaction. The sound that it makes actually emanates from the pile driver block itself. If we go all the way down here, note that even though the um, and see, it's actually making us bounce, even though it's impacting the ground right below us, we don't um, hear it because the sound comes from the block, the pile driver block, not the mining pile impacting the ground. Yeah. So anyway, and it took a, it takes a while for that block down there to actually update. It's interesting. But yeah, pile driver, you let it go long enough, and it'll dig you a hole. But like I said, I can't think of a situation where I would use it. That's the pile driver. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, next episode, I'm going to show you what I consider to be the uh, probably the most singularly useful mining machine in the game. We're going to talk about the Sonic Bore, which basically combines the um, usefulness of the uh, tunnel bore um, with the ability to point it in any direction. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the Sonic Bore and, and some useful situations for it, um, its limitations and its strengths. Because all these machines, you'll notice, have their strengths and they have their limitations, um, upsides and downsides. And that's really Rotary Craft uh, in a nutshell. Everything has a benefit and everything has a downfall, downside. So yeah, that's the pile driver. So stay tuned next episode for the Sonic Bore. Uh, I'm Sentin Leach and I'm signing out.